So we're sitting at Jaguar I-Pace and we have locked ourselves into the vehicle pretending that we are not in the vehicle just to show you what happens if we enter the car. For this we've got this key here, it's got four buttons, the lower two keys are to open the bonnet and the trunk, the upper ones are to lock and unlock the car and the lock button is a bit raised. I'm going to click on the unlock button now. Hazard lights are flashing, instrument cluster is turning on. Opening the door, closing the doors if I was entering and the head unit comes to life and you see the Jaguar logo and the start stop button pulls us and pressing this. You can see the backlight of the steering wheel buttons are turned on, the subunit turns on as well for the climate controls and yeah, let's have a look on the whole arrangement here. It's all relatively compact. The whole dashboard seems to lean against the driver and the passenger. You see a, a classical instrument cluster with tachometer and speedometer, but you can change this very individually. But we will have a closer look on this later on. Then there's this relatively small head unit in a widescreen format. But we will have a closer look on this later on. And we've got a very special uh, climate control subunit with an interesting geometry underneath. There are holes everywhere, which is uh, quite an interesting interior design. You will find the same design elements, the holes in the steering wheel. So it's uh, kind of a yeah, consistent and unusual, but sportive design. In the area of the climate controls, you can individually decide on what you want to see. Uh, an alternative would be cell phone or media. So it's not only climate controls, which is quite remarkable are the buttons with the displays on it. And depending on what you are adjusting, the spacing of the clicks changes. So if you are changing the temperature, it's quite uh, small spaces. And if you pull the button, you are redirected to another menu where you have larger spaces to change the ventilation speed. Pushing the button again, I'll be redirected to the temperature settings. If I click on the seat symbol, the display turns black and there is no spacing at all. So it's quite individual and remarkable. Just like the remarkable gear shift, there's only three buttons, D for drive and for neutral and R for reverse. And on the right hand side, there's some shortcuts with the upper symbol, the upper button, I can activate or deactivate the active cruise control. Below, I can choose between several drive modes. And on the same button, there's a shortcut for navigation. And with the lower button, I can switch on or off the traction control. All in all, the interior has a very sportive and compact look. All the curved shapes and the design uh, looks very, very um, sportive and seems quite Jaguar-like. So, and of course, we have to leave the car again. So we switch off the ignition. So we see the Jaguar logo, head unit, instrument cluster, turn black, open the door as if we were leaving, close the door. The logo disappears and we lock the car and the display is turned black immediately. So we've got a multifunctional steering wheel with buttons on the left and on the right side. The right side is being used for things that happen while we are driving, like a limiter or active cruise control, the distance to the leading vehicle, the lane keep assist, then we've got a steering wheel heating. So it's all things that happen while driving. The left side is being used to control the instrument cluster itself. So we get a shortcut for speech control. Then there is one button to control the phone. So you get the same button to pick up the phone and to hang up the phone. Then in the lower left corner, there is a button you can individualize. And then we've got uh, a left and right knob and a little roller in the middle that you can push down as well. So let's start with the button in the lower left corner. And we're going to individualize it now. If you click on it, in the head unit there comes a menu where you can decide what happens on short press or long press. So we are going to choose something for short press, like mute. And for long press we are taking the 
let's say the offer screen off function let's get back to home and let's see if the long press works in the jaguar long press really means long press here we go the head unit has been switched off and if you click on it it comes back again so let's check if our new mute button works and it worked as you could see the speaker icon was crossed out so let's have a look on the instrument cluster it's got kind of a classical layout but it doesn't imitate the typical tubes and the whole instrument cluster is being controlled via those two buttons and the roller to enter the menu of the instrument cluster i have to press the roller and then there appears kind of a navigation bar in the upper area with different options and i will start with uh, display options now the central area of the display is called info panel here you can choose what you want to see in the central area it was switched off this is why we saw the silhouette of the jaguar um, now we choose map scroll up this is to leave the menu and there is the map so we enter the menu again display info panel we've just seen then there's display layout click on that right now we've got two dials you can choose one dial as well quite futuristic you can go to full map you have to exit the menu again to see this i know that was that was wrong just go back to display display layout and full map and then just scroll up to leave the menu and here we go there's the full map so further details you will find in screens and uh, just let me go back to two dial mode so always when i scroll up i leave the menu click again i'm in the menu again click further to the right there is some options on the head-up display you can change brightness and position etc then there's vehicle settings so it's quite extensive the menu so I just click on security features now to give an example so there's really lots of things you can change for an instrument cluster this is something you could also find in a mercedes they offer a lot in the instrument cluster bmw doesn't it always depends on the manufacturer of course um, so then we've got media you can change the source uh, so everything via this left hand buttons driver assistance all lots of functions cruise steering assistance keep lane assistance etc click on both scroll up and now i was thrown out of the menu so always when you scroll up to the top you leaving the menu which is quite annoying because you really have to stop precisely which might be distracting when you are driving the content of the left and the right tube cannot be altered as you have seen in the intro there are some shortcuts like hard keys in the center console and if you press them you choose between different drive modes right now we are in rain ice snow after a while you are being redirected to the screen before um, so then there is eco everything turns green there is comfort and then there is dynamic everything turns to a sportive red the usual control limbs are arranged around the edge and in the lower area you find information on assistance systems or trip and of course there is the outside temperature in the upper right corner and the time being shown on the upper left corner so this is a quite family setup and you know where you are quickly so then let's have a look on the head unit uh, the head unit uh, has got three tiles that cannot be altered um, and those tiles represent the three major features you would expect uh, navigation media and phone so on each tile you have some shortcuts in the lower area like for entering a destination so if you click on that you can directly start entering a destination we go back to the home screen then 
And when we flip to the next page, we get some more functions like eco data and in control apps, etc. If you click on eco data, you get some information on the vehicle. We click back. Then there is cameras um, with all the different views on the left side. You will see more of that in the screens, of course. Just check out our online database. Then there's web browser, control apps, Apple CarPlay, and so on. Then there's the next page containing more functions like ASI Suite. If you click on an icon on the left side, you will have the content according to the feature. And on the right side, there are always the same four functions like phone, navigation, and the weather. When swiping to the left, there is the possibility to set up an individualized home screen. We will do this later on. And that was it regarding this four pages. And in the lower area, there is a non-alterable um, navigation bar with a profile shortcut. Then there's the home button to get back from every feature. There's settings. We will have a closer look on this later on. And then there are further shortcuts for navigation, telephone, media. And regardless of what's on the left side, the right side, there's always the same four features. Then there is Bluetooth, cameras, you've seen that before, a shortcut to park distance control, and a shortcut for the parking assist. And then to set up your own home screen, you have to press the home button a uh, second time. And then you get this overview showing you the four pages. And via long press, you have the option to add a new page. And choose this freshly created page. And via long press again, you get some kind of a grid that you can fill with functions as you like can drag them around, you can change the size, and by clicking on the next empty tile, the page from where you can choose the features from opens again. So let's choose something that's a bit bigger, like the clock, can drag it around as well. And then by clicking on home, you automatically save, and there is our self-created screen. And it can, of course, delete this screen again by long pressing and dragging and dropping it into the dustbin. So now let's create a profile. So click on home, click on the profile shortcut and then create new profile. We give this profile a name, screens, click OK. this without key in our online database screens we of course go through every use case and then we can choose an icon for this profile and there's some more setting options on this profile and under each option, it says learning. So this automatically adopts to my user behavior. I click on off or on, depending on whether I want the system to learn from my behavior. And there's lots of things the system automatically captures, like heated seat or predictive call lists, etc. So if you don't want the system to record your behavior, you can switch this off. We don't see an explicit save button, so this all seems to be saved automatically. You can uh, switch off all the learnings by simply clicking on this off button, then it says learning off. And if you click on forget, the whole um, recorded data can be reset at once. So I go back to my profile and this should be saved now. Okay, there it is, I can see my icon. So if I click on this icon, I can edit the profile again or by clicking on the profile's name, deactivate it. 
Um, and we're going to add a second profile just to see how the icons are being arranged in the lower left corner. So we say this is screens two. Clicking OK. Not now. Yes. Change the icon and go back to the home screen. And then there is two profiles I can choose from. And that was it on the head unit. In the upper right corner, the icons are not clickable. I cannot pull down anything. Um, and there are no further buttons hidden. So this head unit is quite compact and easy to understand. And those tiles here on the home screen can unfortunately not be changed.